live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE, covering IBM World of Watson 2016. Brought to you by IBM. Here's your host, Dave Vellante. Welcome back to the Mandalay Bay, everybody. This is theCUBE, the worldwide leader in live tech coverage. Gerard Baum is here, he's the Chief Digital Officer at the Scheffler Group. Gerard, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks for coming on. Thanks a lot, I'm happy to be here. So really interesting discussion off camera about the Scheffler Group and what it is, but tell us, tell our audience, what is the Scheffler Group? Scheffler today is a technology company being present in 150 countries, up to 87,000 employees, 30,000 engineers, 100,000 products, 75 plants, two new every year, so a dynamic, growing technology company. And the company being on the digital path, which is, uh, let's say, the, the, the dimension of change and the, the dimension of uh, new competitiveness. Okay, and talk a little bit more about the products that you guys provide and services. There are different products uh, starting with the typical bearings, which also are on the way to get sensors and provide data. It continues with things like uh, active torsion stabilizer, helping high-end cars to get more, uh, let's say, comfort and higher sportiveness. We are talking about double clutches, we are talking about uh, thermal management, and we are talking a lot of parts being in powertrain and uh, drivetrain within most of the OEMs globally. So, you're primarily a supplier to the automotive industry exclusively, right, is that right? Or? That's one part, the other part is we are a supplier to other industries, which is train industry, wind industry, machine tool industry, with our components, which could be bearings, linear drives, motors, and things like that. Okay, so you are at the center of this whole IoT movement, yeah. obviously, so everybody talks at a high level about, you know, instrumenting the windmill is sort of the <laughs> metaphor. So, what's happening in the business. Specifically, talk about your role as the chief digital officer, how that came to be, and how you're driving digital transformation in your company. I look basically for potential which coming out of uh, integration, which is coming out of data, and which is, let's say, in the past, uh, based on different, uh, let's say, different divisions, regions, and units being responsible, was not in the, in the high focus of the company. So I look at integration value, I look at additional value based on data, and I'm looking as a nature of that digital business towards change. Well, it's funny, because I mistakenly thought you were the chief data officer mm -hmm. uh, at your company, but you're the chief digital officer, but a lot of your, a lot of you know, digital is data. Yeah. But where do you draw the line between chief data and chief digital. It is there a chief data officer at your company, or are you de facto? <laughs> <laughs> so data is the, the raw material. Digitalization is additional value add you generate based on data, but also, and that's the key for Scheffler, we have a very strong engineering capability. If you develop a strong digital capability and if you are not able to bring that together, you will not generate the value which is able, which is possible and which, is, which you should generate. So digitalization means you bring mechanic, mechatronic, and data together. So the data officer has data. The, the mechanical engineers, they have the, let's say, the, the complexity, the precision, and also the, the technical innovation. And my job is to bring both worlds together. And essentially, you're instrumenting the vast majority of your product set yeah. so that you can collect data in the end use cases, right? Yes. So, what's that journey been like? What's the progression been? When did that start and kind of where are you now? It started um, with a high focus more than 10 years, two years ago. As of today, we have some of the products in operation. So, for example, Industry 4.0 machine is a machine with a lot of sensors. And these sensors, they need to generate value. And the value is uptime, is precision, and this machine we have in our regular production line with the task to, to replicate it. In other areas, we are just at the beginning. We are developing the, let's say, the, the blueprints. We have set up pilot projects and we are trying to evaluate the, the benefits. So there's a, a, let's say, a very broad uh, variety of uh, maturity levels. How did you decide where to start? The deep conversation <laughs> with the business, or was it? 
Who's, who, want, who wants to be the guinea pig? <laughs> okay, I think that's a key point. What I did is just first analyze what are the activities existing, then looked at experiences from outside, where are the biggest uh, wind potentials, and then defined a roadmap, let's say, with a priority list, uh, reducing the number of activities to the, the key ones and adding some ones who have a potential big impact talking to the business, convincing them, and then setting up joint uh, projects. In some cases with their funding, in other cases with my funding. Interesting, the, you know, we always talk about the role of developers uh, in conferences like this. You got 30, I think you said 38,000 engineers at the company? More than 30, yeah. Uh, and, and it seems like the, the, in, in your world, the engineer is kind of the, the new developer. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> they've got maybe, Obviously, you had a technical background, but also maybe a development background. What's that dynamic like? What does that you know, person look like? I think that's a key point you mentioned. If we achieve that the traditional engineers being very innovative, being patent leader right now in Germany with companies, com competing with companies who are bigger than, than Scheffler and they are still at the top of the patent list, if you are able to ignite them with digital innovation, bring these things together, then I think this is a formula to, to win. And this is just what I'm trying to, looking at their challenges, looking at their processes, and then trying to, to figure out, bringing both worlds together, what is the, the additional value add. They basically embrace it. They are engineers, they check you, they, they try to find the weaknesses, and if they are convinced, they are your friends and they, they push you to go faster. You know, Gerard, I was at a conference like this, I think it was an IBM conference, it was not maybe, not maybe more than five years ago, and the speaker was in the automotive industry and he said that within the, within the next 25 years we'll have autonomous vehicles. I'm, I'm laughing because the pace of innovation <laughs> has occurred so fast. I mean, you started two years ago, um, and I'm sure have come a long way, but I mean, what did we miss? <laughs> How did it happen so quickly? I'm more than 30 years now in the automotive industry, <laughs> and um, I think there are some revolution, technology revolutions which happened during the last uh, five years, five plus years, and clearly the revolution of the, of the micro sensors is one thing which, is, uh, which has happened. There is a revolution of what we call big data and uh, machine intelligence working with this data. And there is uh, also the, let's say, the computational power, which increased significantly. If you look at big data, if you look at uh, machine learning, sensors, microsensors, and bring all these things together, this is the, uh, the, let's say, the basis for revolution, not only in automotive and highly autonomous. So, when you're thinking about, when you think about the autonomous vehicle, what role do your products play in that? Scheffler right now is there where the peep, where the things move, where the forces are, where the heat is, and um, connecting this with, uh, let's say, the integration of a sensor, the sensor fusion, integrating that with driving strategies and connecting them to the outside world. This is a, a long value chain, and uh, Scheffler's role in this value chain right now is we are providing functionalities which will be enhanced and we will provide data which will be used in this entire value chain to, to support highly autonomous driving. We do have research projects underway where we do have, uh, let's say, very modern components like uh, in-vehicle electrical motors, which are brakes and motor and steering within one element, and these components, these modules, um, deliver a lot of additional data, which then can be combined with uh, high precise maps, could be combined with different driving strategies and also uh, driving optimization algorithms. So we have a big chance to enlarge the picture we are right now in based on, on the data. The, the, the value chain, supply chain within the automotive industry is you know, very complex, at least to an outsider. And I think about the telecommunications industry for years because they would, they would have this purpose-built equipment with different protocols and standards. And is it, is it the same in the, in the current state of the automotive industry as we begin to instrument uh, products? 
or is it more open source software, you know, API connections that are more standardized? I think the standardization is around APIs right now. I think more could be beneficial, but right now it's on that level and uh, every company right now develops their own, uh, let's say, cognitive environmental system. Companies are developing their own strategy and steering algorithms and uh, there needs to be some cooperation at different levels and uh, at the API level it's, it's working. Uh, I want to go back to the, the conversation we were having about engineers. As you well know, engineers are very precise. Um, I, I would say they tend to be conservative for, mm -hmm. for products that have to get into the market. You know, many times they'll experiment, but they tend to, to be a little bit of a control freaks, yeah. I'll say, okay. Did you see a big resistance early on in terms of digitizing products, or was there a, an enthusiasm to invent. Engineer is used to deliver things and be responsible for life cycle. So I, at the beginning, went into a lot of in-depth discussions, very deep, very open, but up to a level of depth which is, um, let's say, astonishing in some cases. Astonishing? Yeah, yeah. because they really want to understand <laughs> everything. What is the algorithm? How much data? How much is the latency? How to connect the things? And after these in-depth discussions, I saw a lot of openness. At the beginning, a lot of check and balance, but then opening up. So you feel like we've, we've crossed that tipping point where there's big resistance to this sort of instrumenting yeah. the, the vehicles. Um, I'll give you, we have out of time, but last word. So where do, you, where do you see this whole thing going? What's your vision as the chief digital officer of Scheffler? I think at the end of the day, it will be the the CDO will be measured based on value he provides, value in product, in process, in, let's say, transformation of the company. So I see in the future CDOs being in most of the companies established and the success will depend on the bottom line uh, impact he will do. I, I forgot to ask you, so what, what, are you doing anything with Watson, analytics, IoT, what's your relationship yeah. with IBM? Um, we have decided after significant benchmarking that we will partner with the IBM on the cloud technologies including Watson and uh, we will use these technologies based on many things we are doing right now. So things like uh, predicting failure, um, uh, looking at past history, uh, collecting data, analyzing collecting data. data, doing analytics, doing prediction, doing optimization, doing model building, also looking at uh, significant um, nanomechanic and in-depth uh, behaviors of structures. So there is a variety of uh, projects started. Great. Gerard, thanks very much for coming to theCUBE. It was a pleasure to meet you. Thank you very much. Hey, you're welcome. Keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. It's theCUBE. We're live from Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas. We'll be right back. Okay.